So I think a lot of you have noticed that I'm not too impressed with battleships recently. I've slowly stopped playing them or playing them as aggressively as I used to. I just feel like I don't get rewarded as much when I push in as if I just sit at the back and wait for a good RNG salvo. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing, honestly. I try a brawl, I try and push in with a GK or maybe an Ohio, that kind of thing. Oftentimes it results in my death very quickly. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I go play a Vermont if I want to play another battleship or a Yamato or something else like that. And I gotta say, Vermont has been really, really nice the last, uh, last week or so that I've really started playing it a lot more again. These guns are incredibly consistent compared to something like a Kerfurst, where you actually get overmatch, good uh, shell velocity and dispersion out to really long ranges. As you could see, we killed that Stalingrad at, what, 29 kilometers? He was on pretty low health though, but nice to be able to finish things off at those ranges. And if you get really lucky, you could even crush destroyers. Uh, this salvo reminding me of the good old days where you'd have AP full pens. That was nine out of our 12 shells hitting that gearing at those ranges. So definitely worth shooting at DDs when you're in a battleship like this one. But I think the best thing is feeling like I'm going to get damage when battleships go broadside. Cruisers, it is a bit of a gamble whether you get damage or not just because Overpans are still very likely. I do think I got pretty lucky against that Wooster earlier on in this match, but against things like a Montana, I feel pretty confident that I'm going to get some big damage. And it's really kind of rare when I don't. Um, well, a great example is this Yamato who's about to turn flat broadside to us. <laughs> I don't know. Trust me. I didn't pay these guys to do this, but I do appreciate it. It's helped out my damage in this match tremendously. But... I was expecting a Citadel here, and I think what happened was I aimed just a little too far back. I needed to hit his cheek at this angle. Uh, the main armor belt might just be a little too angled for the pen, but I'm not sure what happened, really. I've got two torpedo protection hits. That's what's making me think that. But decent damage still, but no Citadels, unfortunately. Vermont, of course, really struggles with speed and... Uh, maneuverability. That is the two biggest issues with this ship. Um, the 40 second reload on the guns also isn't that amazing to deal with. You can see we shot before this Yamato and he's actually going to reload uh, before we get our <laughs> reload in. So in the time we did one shot, he got two, right? We're almost loaded, but it does illustrate the point of how slow this ship is <laughs> with its reload. And there's our Pity Citadel when he's on like 4,000 HP. <laughs> a really good game, but uh, there are still some minor annoyances. Um, but still, I don't want to just give the impression that Vermont has been slapping things and every game goes according to plan. This one most certainly did not go according to plan. I wanted to push in a little bit just because this ship has some really, really good AA. And oftentimes the sea cap can be a bit of a stalemate and really the aircraft carrier is what decides who wins or loses the sea cap, assuming there's CVs in the game. So I wanted to push up, maybe support my DD, but it turns out most of the enemy team is here. So I am going to struggle to live here. I'm already on half HP, fully used one of my heals and I'm on fire. Damage control just went on cooldown. So we're in a bad, bad spot here. And this is where Vermont really, really struggles. I felt pretty useless this match, and I wanted to include this as an example of battleships aren't always just the highlights that I could show you guys. I, there's a reason I've been frustrated with these ships a lot, and it often comes down to the RNG that these ships have to deal with. When ships go broadside, you are generally gonna get damage with this particular battleship. Uh, the other ones, even that is a little bit of RNG as we just slap that uh, Bismarck for nearly 30k HP. But you don't actually overmatch 32 millimeters with the Vermont. You only get that 30 millimeter overmatch, which is amazing against cruisers that at least have that 30 mil armor. There's quite a few that have better than that these days. But against a battleship that's bow in, uh, you're going to struggle. <laughs> so even something like a Richelieu, which you would think a tier 10 battleship would just crush. It's actually pretty hard to deal damage to one of those in a Vermont. You're really relying on RNG hitting his superstructure or even breaking his guns. So 
I'm just trying to live at this point, and we do get our heal off and our damage control. So I managed to live, but you can see I've basically done nothing this game. 40k HP or uh, damage done, and well, running away, <laughs> losing this flank very, very quickly here. Uh, the, you can see the AA is pretty good when you have defensive fire up. Without defensive fire, it's a little bit worse than Montana, but not too much worse than Monty. And this Richelieu does the right thing, just spamming me with HE. There's really not a lot I can do about it. I'm going to burn out to that very, very quickly. And if he just stays bow in, if I keep getting salvos like I just had, where I aim for his superstructure and his turrets, and everything crosses over and goes around his superstructure and turrets, we're not going to do any damage to this guy. I'm hoping my carrier can help me, but uh, I am not long for this world. You'll notice I use my damage control on a very specific timing. This is something I'm trying to do where I use my damage control. It's 20 seconds on a Vermont before they're going to shoot their next salvo of HE. So that way I get the most amount of immunity time and hopefully time it in such a way that when their HE hits me, I'm still immune. That is the goal. Maybe min-maxing a little too much there, but it does help you to deal with fires just a little bit. As, again, we basically miss his superstructure and turrets again. <laughs> and the guaranteed relight. Now here is one of the more frustrating things about this ship. Yeah, I can understand not being able to do much to that bow in from, or sorry, Richelieu. Uh, but against a Charles Martel, that's a tier eight cruiser that we overmatch everywhere and he's angled. So you would think this, assuming we hit, is gonna do some massive full pen damage. And that's what I was assuming here. I thought, well, maybe I could take this Charles with me before I go. But no, we actually get a bounce in three overpens. Dispersion was not cooperating very well in this one and we get lit on a double fire. <laughs> so this ship can look really, really, really strong if I just show you that previous game and incredibly, incredibly weak if I show you this one. I think that's my biggest frustration with battleships is that dramatic difference between the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. It's a massive gap. At 13 kilometers, a Charles Martel that does not maneuver. He just stays at the angle he's at. And do we get any damage? Oh, we got 14k that time. Okay, we finally did a little bit of damage, but regardless, it doesn't matter. We're very dead, and we hardly did anything this match. The reason I showed you this is just to offset some of these more amazing games or highlights of games that I'm showing in this video. I don't want to give the wrong impression here that battleships are overpowered, but I also don't want to give the impression that battleships are weak either. I don't think they're either one. I think they're frustrating. That is how I would describe battleships these days is frustrating. And Vermont takes away some of those frustrations most of the time. I would say that previous match was a bit of a rare case where I got really, really unlucky. Usually this ship is relatively consistent as we reach across the map and crush that buffalo a little bit. It's generally gonna do damage. And I find against broadside battleships, it's most consistent. You're very unlikely to uh, overpen a broadside battleship just because they're so massive. At this point, cruisers are a bit of an RNG, whether you overpen them or not. So if you can find yourself on a flank in a Vermont, you're gonna do good things, especially if you get the flanks of battleships. <laughs> nice 41K salvo. Lots of dev strikes going on. That's really what I'm hunting for when I'm playing Vermont. You got that long reload, you may as well try to do your best to make use of it, right? That is the goal of playing this ship. And one of the other reasons I've been playing this ship more often is this defensive fire. It makes you less of a priority for the aircraft carrier. And that means you can play on the flank a little bit easier when you're on your own. And that's nice. I don't want to play Yamato these days, primarily because you're priority target number one. You carry remains, I'm sure you know this. As soon as you see a Yamato on the enemy team, you know juicy, juicy, juicy target to hit that isn't gonna have any AA to deal with your planes. There's very little risk and a ton of reward when hitting that ship. Vermont at least has a little bit of that AA to deter. Uh, you can still die to an aircraft carrier, but timing your at defensive fire with the right strikes can really, really do some damage to the CV's amount of planes he has left. So 
that's at least a bit of a positive and allows me to play a little more freely even in those restrictive CV games. And that's why I've been playing this ship a little bit more recently. And I don't think it's the ship for everyone just because of how slow it is. I'm not gonna lie, it is frustrating to be this big and slow. <laughs> These dev strikes certainly make up for it, but those don't always happen. As you could see, if people just angled to this ship, and I know it sounds silly, just, oh, just angle forehead, right? But it's, it's true. If you just angle to this thing, it's gonna be difficult for it to do much, as you saw in that previous game. Now, at least we can determine whether or not you can angle to this thing based on the positioning, right? It's not like I can run across the map very quickly and uh, just get your broadside for free, right? That's the nice thing about playing against this ship is yes, if it gets your broadside, it's gonna slap you, but you generally know where it is. It can't reposition very quickly at all. So you do have to keep it in the back of your mind all the time, but at least it's not something that's gonna come up and surprise you, right? I think that is reasonably good game design. And it's one of the reasons I do enjoy playing the ship. I don't think it's that unfair to play against. And it's certainly not unfair to play. <laughs> and that's for sure. I think a lot of the matches I have been playing in this ship, I'll be honest, I snipe a lot in this ship. And I've been saying this fairly consistently over the last couple months where I think battleships really are getting relegated to that longer range sniping support fire kind of role in this game and Vermont really does fit that quite well given that I think I have 32 or 36 kilometer range with this spotter plane active you can see we basically can hit the entire map here so it's a really nice one to play for that reason and the overmatch and the pretty good accuracy I think that if you're getting frustrated with those uh, secondary brawling focused battleships Vermont might be one to give a try if you're okay with the slow speed and it basically requiring you to just snipe from the back of the map. It's only really these late game kind of scenarios where you can really push in and make use of some of your armor. It's a pretty big target to hit, so your armor isn't all that amazing. But I do think that given the right match, I think Vermont could be a ton of fun to play. And these dev strikes certainly are very, very satisfying. I think that Connecticut, I believe, is a bit of a clone of Vermont, but they're trying to make it a more brawling focused one. I think that could be a ton of fun if they make a uh, Vermont with a copy of Ohio secondaries, maybe give it a gimmick with the damage control or the heal. I think that could be an interesting ship to have it such a big, slow lumbering ship. Be pretty dangerous at close range. Might not fit the meta so well and I'd probably still end up playing Vermont, but I don't know, even in these closer range scenarios, it can be pretty fun to have these gigantic guns that, well, at least at these ranges, you're gonna have a tough time missing. It's really the overpens you gotta wait for. So there we go, we end the game with nearly 200k damage and actually two dev strikes and a Kraken. Pretty amazing result and the primary reason I wanted to make this video. So let me know what you think about uh, Vermont sniping battleships becoming more of a thing in the way the game is going. So for those of you wondering about the build on this ship that I'm running, here it is, and it includes a bunch of AA skills. When I'm playing this ship, I don't want to have to worry about the really frustrating things about playing a battleship, like being a very easy target to CVs, like burning down to HE spam. So you'll notice I also take range mod. These things are all to just let me play at the back and kind of just play my own solitary game and not have to worry about a lot of the frustrating mechanics in this game. I'm also rocking the gun feeder, although I don't know how worth it that is considering we got a 14,000 damage salvo on that gearing. Um, but maybe switching to it is nice against that Richelieu. Maybe in that situation, I should have swapped to the HE a little faster. There's certainly some things I can improve on when I'm playing. Next on the list of skills to get, I think I'm probably gonna go Adrenaline Rush because this reload is awful. <laughs> and I think that is really the main thing I would like to increase about this ship. Extra survivability, I'm probably just camping the back of the map anyway, so I don't really need these two at all. So I think that extra gun reload would be nice to take. And as far as the equipment goes, you'll notice I'm trying to keep my A alive as much as possible. I really don't find the turrets get knocked out all that often, so I'm just trying to keep my gimmick of decent-ish AA alive on this ship. 
we're taking the uh, range mod and actually steering gears. This allows me to just putter along at my 18 knots or whatever you're usually going when you're maneuvering and uh, actually try and dodge some stuff at longer ranges. It actually works okay. A uh, little bit of concealment, nice to have for sure. And of course we're going accuracy. Uh, if you're taking a, that long of a reload, you really want to buff that accuracy. You're really going for those one-time alpha strike hits as much as possible. That's at least my opinion on it. If you like reload, nothing wrong with that either. It can somewhat relieve one of the big issues with this ship. Uh, but that's the Vermont. I'm really enjoying it so far. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching this video all the way through. So hope you have a great day. I'll see you later.